That's right everyone, this year's countdown is indeed a Halloween special because I actually have a computer to edit videos on, unlike last year. Anyway, over the years, we've looked at scary logos and bumpers from TV, movies, and home media alike, but so far, we've been ignoring two crucial segments of the media world, computers and video game consoles. Yes, these worlds do indeed offer a lot of scary logos, or more specifically, startups. When you turn on your computer or console and expect to be greeted with a nice jingle or lovely animation, you are sometimes greeted with something startling or downright frightening instead. In this video, we'll be looking over some of these latter startups. I present to you my top 10 scary video game console and OS startups. Disclaimer, this list will be focusing more on video game console startups than OS startups because there are way more unique console startups out there. So now, let's boot this list up. Now then, a count of 10. 10. This sound is iconic, and for good reason. Windows 95 was Microsoft's second major Windows success, and has given many fond memories to people around in the 90s. I was not around for the 90s, and though it does sound mystifying, it's also chill-inducing, and not in a good way. For some reason, that initial chime and the fading synth at the end just don't quite sit right for me. Of course, this isn't to say the sound totally freaks me out. After all, we are at the start of the list, no pun intended. But it's enough to make me feel uneasy sometimes. Nine. This one is technically less of a startup and more of a logo. You see, the Action Max was a VHS console, which is basically a little box that you plug into your VCR, which plays special game video cassettes designed specifically for the console. This is the logo that plays before each game, so it's not a startup, because by the time it's playing, the Action Max console itself is already fully on. Anyway, on to the startup itself. The scrolling film in the background reminds me too much of the 1993 MGM UA home video logo, and of course the logo itself zooms in rapidly, as VHS logos tend to do a lot of the time. Usually though, you can expect a logo of that sort to stop when it reaches a certain point. Not so with this one, it just keeps going and going until it envelops the screen and then zooms past. It's almost like it's gonna break through my screen. VHS does not exactly have a good track record when it comes to logos, especially in the late 80s and early 90s, and the Action Max logo is no exception to that rule. A. The scare factor with this one lies mostly with the music. It's way too overbearing and dramatic, kind of like the music from the surround sound logo you see on some VHS tapes. The way the YouTube-esque play button logo is animated, though, doesn't help matters. The OnLive was the first cloud gaming service, so I get they were trying to make something exciting, but this is just too much. Seven.
If you've never heard of the VIS, or Video Information System, it was an interactive CD player that was basically Tandy's answer to the Philips CDI and the Commodore CDTV. And it performed even worse than those two systems, which, I have to admit, is an impressive feat. So it's not very likely that you'll encounter this startup, but be warned, it is pure jump scare material. From the sudden synth sound, to the way the logo just pops up on screen, to the design of the logo itself, it's guaranteed to startle you if you don't expect it. Six. Of all the Sega Saturn models that were released in Japan, Hitachi's High Saturn certainly had the most unique startup. And maybe it's a good thing that the other models didn't try to copy it. The design of the High Saturn logo itself is imposing enough on its own, but the way it's animated makes it worse. It suddenly zooms in off screen, much like the Action Max logo, but then it twists around again and crashes into the background, which becomes this blue vortex, akin to the background from that one scene from the Krusty Krab training video. And the music only makes it worse. I do hope to collect a High Saturn one day, as I've heard it's one of the best Saturn consoles, but I'll remain wary of that startup. Five. Compared to this one, the Windows 95 startup sound doesn't really sound all that bad. That's because unlike that one, which is a little unnerving, the Windows NT 4.0 startup is actually frightening. The whooshes at the start are not very pleasant, and it only gets louder and worse from there, ending in the quick blips which fade out in a disorienting manner. And get this, the shutdown sound for NT 4.0 is just the same sound but backwards, which sounds even worse. I would have hated having to work in an office space in the late 90s if it meant I had to deal with that every morning and evening. And we're back to Sega Saturn consoles, this time with Victor, or JVC's V-Saturn. Much like with the last startup, the music keeps getting louder. In fact, it almost sounds like they were trying to knock off the THX deep note. Also, the way the logo comes together gives me flashbacks to the LEGO logo, which terrified me as a kid. Just see for yourself, and you'll understand why. In fact, I have no idea why I didn't put that logo in my original Top 10 video back in 2019, because it definitely deserved to be on that list. Anyway, I know this startup is basically the same as the regular Japanese Saturn startup, but I chose the V-Saturn startup because the logo design looks slightly worse. Three. Now I'm having flashbacks to the Paramount Home Video Bumpers from last year's countdown. Seriously, this one is ghostly and creepy. The way the text looks and how it slowly moves gives me chills. But the thing that really brings it home is the lack of music. You don't even have a creepy sounding narrator reading out the text like in the Paramount Bumpers. It's completely silent. If the logo looked slightly different, was a bit faster, and was accompanied by the iconic Neo Geo jingle, this startup probably wouldn't even be on the list. But alas, that was not to be. Two. 
In 1991, Sega released the Mega CD, which was an add-on for the Mega Drive, or Genesis, that could play enhanced CD-based games. It was released in North America in 1992 and Europe in 1993, although in North America it was known as the Sega CD. In 1992, JVC, or Victor, partnered with Sega to create an all-in-one Mega Drive slash Mega CD system called the Wonder Mega. However, it was really expensive, so not long after they released a somewhat cheaper version called the Wonder Mega M2. It was this console that JVC released in North America as the XI. Now all of these systems had startup or BIOS screens that were pretty similar to one another, although the Sega CD startups were more different. And all of them are pretty scary, but for me, one of them is scarier than the rest. This screen has a weird purple background with a color-changing orb at the bottom, much like the Wonder Mega BIOS screen. But the main part of the screen, the animation of the logo, is the thing that makes these BIOS screens scary. And the XI version is the worst because of the logo's design. Seeing that X fly around, zoom in, and stretch is very unsettling. Not only that, but the music is a bit unsettling and awfully repetitive. I also want to get an XI someday, but again, I'll have to be wary of this terrifying BIOS screen.
Until I was eight years old, the only home console we had was a PlayStation, and though my brothers loved that thing to death and played it all the time, I never really got into it as much as they did. And the startup. Oh. My. God. This is the closest a game console has ever gotten to giving me nightmares. The deafening music is extremely unsettling. And not only is the Sony logo terrifying, but the PlayStation logo that pops up when you put it in a game is also frightening with the way it transitions in and with the turn the music takes, especially the trailing flute-like synth. I would sometimes hide somewhere or run out of the room when the console was turned on. This console may be nostalgic for my brothers, but to me, it's just terrifying. That's ten. Continuing the PlayStation theme, I got a PS2 with the $100 that my grandparents gave me when I was 13. And though the original PlayStation didn't give me many fond memories, the PS2 certainly did. I had a blast playing games like Grand Theft Auto Vice City and Gran Turismo 3 and 4. But occasionally, something would be up with the DVD drive, or it wouldn't read a DVD that was very scratched up, or an improperly formatted CD, and this would pop up. Now, believe it or not, back then this screen didn't really bother me that much. Everyone I've seen says this terrifies them, but I wasn't scared. However, in recent years, I've started to realize where everyone else is coming from. The ghostly red visuals, the creepy audio, and the fact that it sometimes comes in out of nowhere definitely makes this a worthy candidate for one of the scariest startups. However, even now, it doesn't bother me much, even though I can now see why so many other people are terrified of it. So that's why this is the bonus and not part of the top 10. Well, there you have it. We've looked at TV and film logos, home video logos and bumpers, and now video game console and OS startups. At this point, I don't know if I'll continue making these countdowns. I feel like I've gone through every category. If anyone else has an idea of what I could do for these countdowns, please let me know in the comments. Also, what do you think of these startups? Have any of them exceeded your spook limitations for this season? Anyway, thanks for watching. For the first time since 2020, Happy Halloween! Until next time, stay tuned.